What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove and reinstall a throttle body on this 2015 Chevy Silverado. If you need parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. I wanna disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket extension to ratchet. Loosen this up. Grab the negative terminal, slide it off. Set it aside so it doesn't arc out by accident. We'll loosen up this worm clamp right here. Also over here, there's a worm clamp back here near the throttle body. Loosen this one up with the same straight blade screwdriver. I'll take this snorkel off this side, off the air box. And then over here, there's two pipes on each, each side. There's this little gray lock that you have to push down on the lock and then slide it out, just like that. You have to do the same on the other side. This one, I'm pushing up from underneath and then slide it up. And I can grab this and just slide it back, wiggle it a little bit, and the whole thing comes up. Disconnect this connector on the throttle body. I'm just gonna use a straight blade screwdriver, push out on that lock, and then push down and pull the connector out, just like that. Now I'll take a 10 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet, take these four bolts out. I'm just gonna leave these two bottom ones in slightly and then take the other two out. I could do the top two slightly, either one. It's just so the throttle body doesn't fall when I take these other bolts out. Support the throttle body while you take the other two bolts up. And just grab it and pull it up. Alright, so with the new electronics, you want to be careful with this. You don't want to drop it. These are very sensitive. Um, if you drop it, generally you have to replace the throttle body. Now, you really don't want to take any cleaner to clean this out. Um, you can, you just got to be careful. You don't want any of the cleaner to get into the electronics. And you really don't want to be playing with the throttle blade, opening it and closing it. Um, you definitely do not want to touch those two screws if you loosen those up, the whole thing's gonna be junk. It's a good idea to replace this throttle body gasket, um, or at least check it, make sure it looks like it's still raised up. If it's crushed at all, it definitely needs to be replaced. Ours looks okay. So we'll take our throttle body, take the screws, or the bolts, get the bolts started. We'll get one started up top and then one down below. We'll take a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and a ratchet and tighten these down. Now I'm going to torque this with a torque wrench with a 10 millimeter socket to 89 inch pounds. Slide this into position. Now there's a little bracket right here that's going to slide into that slot right there. So slide it on the mass on the throttle body first. Get that lined up there. You can take and slide this on right here onto the air box. Good. I'm going to take a straight blade screwdriver, tighten up this worm clamp right here on the throttle body, and then tighten this one up as well. I'll we'll take these hoses, these are going to clip in, make sure they lock in place. Do the same on this side.
We'll take the negative battery cable, hook it up to the negative side of the battery. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. Just snug this up. Grab the cable, just make sure it's nice and tight. Won't loosen up. So after you replace the throttle body or you pull the throttle body out and clean it, what you're gonna wanna do is an idle relearn. Now what you can do is if you have a scan tool, you're gonna scan it, clear the codes, and do an idle relearn if your scan tool does that. If it doesn't, you can do a manual relearn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start the vehicle, let it run for three minutes. After it's run for three minutes, shut it off and let it sit for one minute. After one minute, start it, let it run for another three minutes. At this point, make sure the check engine light is not on. If it is on, you're gonna have to clear the code again. Um, but I would, with the engine running, um, accelerate, see if the RPMs are responding properly. If they're responding properly, drive around a parking lot, make sure it's good and safe, and then take it out on the road, make sure it rides on the road safe. If it's still not idling properly, what you need to do is drive it around about 44 miles per hour. You need to do a bunch of accelerations and decelerations multiple times for about 10 minutes, I would say, maybe five minutes, and then bring the vehicle back, shut the vehicle off, let it sit, clear any codes that are present, and then try it again. Make sure the idle is working properly, and then you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.